Hey dudes, welcome to Creative Suite episode 13. This week we've got a special guest, Russell Preston Brown. Hi everyone, it's Mike here again. And this week I am way too busy to do my podcast, so I've had a very special guest do a podcast, a guest podcast for me. It's Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems. He's done a cracking job and a Photoshop tip about how to turn your images to black and white. He is the master of Photoshop and I'm super happy with what he's done. Thank you very much, Russell, uh, for the podcast. Anyway, without any further ado, here he is. Hello, this is Russell Brown from Adobe Systems. And you're watching Creative Suite TV with Mike McHugh. Why, what an amazing collection of tips and techniques. This is the one-stop location to find out everything you need to know. So tune in to, of course, Creative Suite TV. Now, Dr. Brown has left behind an amazing tip and technique of his own. Watch for that. Black and white variations. Look for it on Mr. McHugh's website. That's it. Have fun. Welcome back to the one and only Russell Brown Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk about converting color images to black and white. Now, there are a lot of different techniques to do this, and over the years, I've collected some very interesting ways to convert color to black and white from some very talented Photoshop users. I've decided to put all of this together into one fine little action that you can run on your images. Now this action can be found on my website or on the CD from which you may be watching this movie. The action is called Black and White Techniques, right here. All you do is identify its location, go back in here to Photoshop, to the Actions tabbed palette, and then over here to the Flyout arrow and Load Actions. Locate it on your machine and load it, just like that. And here it is. So here's the action which I've just loaded, black and white techniques. Under this are a series of actions from different people, including myself. Here's one from Nikos Kantarakis, which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name, and down here from Tom Neiman. To get more information about their particular techniques, toggle down the README file for both of them and double click here on the Stop button. You'll then see the information, in this case for Tom Neiman, that you could get more information from his website, epaperpress.com. Okay, let's move forward. All you do to get this to run is click here on the black and white variations at the top right here. Then we simply and easily go down here and play by clicking this button at the bottom. And the process starts. What it's doing is creating a history state for each of the different variations of all of these fine Photoshop users, including, I must say, Rob Carr's technique, which I've used for years. Now it's going to process through these and give us our results. The one it's working on right now from Nikos actually is putting noise into the image, and if the files are fairly large, it might take a little bit of time to process it. OK, it looks like it has completed the entire set. All you do now is click here on your History tabbed palette, and we can go through all of the variations. As you can see here, a history state for each of these has been saved. Here's the Convert to Grayscale, a simple Convert to Grayscale. Moving down, here's the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel, a hue and saturation with a minus 100 saturation. Let's scroll down here some more. A simple desaturate channel mixer with a focus on greens, channel mixer with a focus on reds, channel mixer with a focus on yellow, and here's a channel mixer of my own combination with a red of 50%, a green of 25, and a blue of 25. And of course, the lab luminosity channel right here, and of course, one of my favorite techniques the Russell Brown technique. If I click here, you can see it. 
Now with this technique, I've saved up here in the layers palette the ability to adjust it. And you know with this technique, you double click here on the color mode adjustment layer right in the middle, double click on that, and then you can go through and adjust this and see variations with this technique right there. You can of course go into each individual channel and adjust this for reds or any of the other colors here. So the Russell Brown technique is very good for adjusting individual colors. So don't forget as you click on each of these history states you have controls here in the layers palette. Let's take a look at Rob Carr's technique which is a great technique that combines two layers of the luminosity taken from the lab color space. He then combines the two together. In this technique, if I turn this top layer off, you can see that he's saturating the two with a multiply here for the mode adjustment. You can go in and adjust this by targeting this topmost layer and running a hue and saturation adjustment on his top layer to get different tonal qualities applied over the image like this. Okay, and as we move down, here's Nikos's grain technique. And if I zoom in on this, you can see this. is some really interesting grain that he's putting into these channels. And let's zoom back out here again. And take a look at this next one, Tom's technique down here. And Tom's technique is similar to my technique, where he breaks down the image into layers. But his technique puts a black layer at the top set to color mode right here. Very, very interesting. And again, you can go in here to the hue filter, double click on this, and as with mine, you can adjust the hue and get different adjustments. I found some interesting characteristics to this technique that Tom is using that might even be better than my technique, but don't let anyone know that. Okay, so these are all the techniques into one little package. You can go through, run your images through this process, and then take a look at these different variations and find out which one might suit your particular project. You then get to the one you like, make adjustments to it here in the layers palette, and then of course flatten the item and turn it to grayscale. So there you have it, a great new way to see a lot of variations for black and white easily and quickly here at the Russell Brown Show. Gee, uh, oh, I've been busy. Um, I'd like to, first of all, thank Russell for a wonderful tip. It's given me a bit of time to do some uh, extra other uh, work that I've been up to. Just come uh, back to the studio now. It's a little bit hot and bothered. So thank you very much. Uh, Russell for that what a wonderful well collection of tips of how to turn your images to black and white don't forget we have the creative suite tv series one available on dvd so if you go to my website mcu.com.au you can get yourself that for the very reasonable price of 33 bucks australian it's hardly you know it's hardly anything at all so get along and get yourself that i'd also like to send a big hi to everyone watching via youtube uh, get on board the YouTube res revolution you can watch even if you don't have iTunes so people using uh, video uh, podcasting and video iPod or you decide to watch using iTunes if you don't have that you can now watch the Creative Suite TV via YouTube online so uh, I'll put my um, uh, address for that on my website as well thanks again for watching folks this is Creative Suite TV for another week we've got a fantastic product review next week I think, well, next time uh, I get around to doing one of these episodes. Have a lot of fun. Right,